Hello and welcome to the Costing and Pricing Learning Program. My name is David Gilchrist and in this webinar I will be looking at pricing practice. So this is webinar five. Before we get into that web into the webinar material though, I would like to remind everyone of the copyright restrictions that are related to the Costing and Pricing Learning Program and it's important particularly if you're intending to use these materials um, beyond just for personal use uh, that you understand what the restrictions are and uh, how you might be able to use these materials for commercial or other purposes. Make sure you keep, uh, you have a look at the copyright material and you follow up on that. The other thing I'd like to point out is, of course, in terms of navigation, uh, these materials are marked with navigation pegs that bring you back to parts of the study guide, the macro case study and various other aspects of the materials that are available on the costing and pricing learning program. Make sure that you consider the content of this particular webinar uh, in the light of the costing and pricing uh, learning program fully and look at the other materials as you um, look at these materials. Remembering too that these uh, webinars are, entire, are designed uh, to provide people with a general overview of the topic and to help you to understand some of the nuances of uh, costing and pricing so that when you're in the materials you know where to look and what some of the problems and issues uh, you might face that need to be dealt with. In this uh, webinar, as I said, we're looking at co pricing practice. In the last webinar, we looked at costing practice and in the next webinar, webinar six, we'll have a look at some controls in costing and pricing. Let's get into the main subject today, pricing practice. In this webinar, we're going to examine implementing a pricing project, so how you go about actually undertaking a pricing project and particularly to consider some of the risks and some of the issues that you might need to think about before you uh, launch into that. We'll look at determining a markup for different units of measurement, so remember units of measurement are our individual activities that we provide um, for our recipients and are, if you like, the basis upon which we cost and price. We'll also come back to that target price gap and the target price gap uh, as I mentioned right back in the very first webinars in this series and which is written right through the costing and pricing learning program is the, the target or the key aspect of our um, learning uh, in this program. We're really concerned to make sure that the target price gap is well understood by people how to arrive at that target price gap and then ultimately how to respond to that target price gap from a financial sustainability perspective. Then finally in this webinar we'll have a look at some of the governance issues that pertain to pricing specifically. Okay, when you're looking to implement a pricing project like a costing project, it's in very important that you have an understanding of some of the requirements uh, that you will need in order to be able to undertake a pricing project that has sufficient quality to allow you to be confident about the target price that you might calculate. So for instance, you need to think about resourcing, who can undertake the process, how much time it might take to undertake the process and also what won't be done as a result of doing this work. It's always important to consider that cost benefit um, rule that we've uh, talked about in previous uh, webinars where we often say that you need to think about 80% getting the, uh, the pricing 80% right uh, rather than spending more time and money on the process than is necessary to be able to strategically respond to that uh, calculated target price. You also need to think about quality control. So pricing like costing is new for many uh, people in the disability sector and as such when you think about the pricing process that you go through it's important to also consider having people available to review what you've done for reasonableness, to review it for accuracy and also make sure the models that you use to arrive at target prices are um, constructed in such a way as to not have errors or omissions in them. It's really important, particularly in early days, to undertake this quality control check. Finally, you need to think about the components of your markup what kinds of things you want to put into your markup and we'll talk about markup as a concept in a couple of slides time. However, for the moment we need to understand that not only does price equal the cost of service delivery but it also equals an additional markup that ensures your financial sustainability moving forward. 
Um, then I guess the other aspect that's very important and should again be considered in the context of the materials in the costing and pricing learning program and particularly seminar f uh, five which looks at costing and pricing uh, using the Curtin NDS tool, uh, it's very important for you to come up with a costing model that makes sense for your organisation taking into account its size, its complexity, relative turnover and also how much time and capacity you have in populating it. Most organisations are likely to use an Excel based spreadsheet um, system for their model and that's fine but also remembering that Excel is prone to errors and omissions um, and it must come back to that reasonableness check, that quality control that I talked about earlier to make sure that you feel confident with the output at the end of the day. Okay, let's have a look at some components of pricing. Firstly, the UOM price, the unit of measurement price or the activity price, so remember again the UOM is that item that we actually sell, whether it's a service or a good, it's the actual iteration of the item. And as you can see on this slide, the UOM price equals the UOM costs, so all of the costs, and we talked about this in the last webinar, plus a markup. Now this idea of a markup is a really important one. It's not one that we've often considered in particularly in the disability sector where by far and away most providers of disability services are not for profit and charitable organisations. Traditionally we haven't thought about markup because we haven't had the ability to determine prices. However, I think from this perspective we need to really uh, consider very strongly that it's important to know that the price that we are targeting has two purposes. The first one is so that we understand what our uh, true cost of service delivery and our true price should be and also so that we understand the gap between what our target price is and what we're actually being paid. Remember the price, costing and pricing process is an internal process not an external process and that's a really important aspect because a lot of financial management and control, a lot of financial reporting broadly in the not-for-profit human services sector in Australia has been focused on external information requirements. Costing and pricing is an internal process and therefore the de de derivation or the calculation of the target price is undertaken for internal governance processes and sustainability assurance. Now remember with the price it certainly needs to have things like cost recovery involved in it. As discussed in the uh, previous webinar the real cost of supplying a service to a client consists of far more than just the direct cost of actually supplying the service. The client is also benefit, benefiting from the fact that you can organise to deliver that service, ensure your people are properly, properly trained to do so and that you have all of the other infrastructure behind your service delivery. Remember it doesn't matter that previous funding arrangements or even current funding arrangements might disclude funding for particular purposes. This is an internal process and we need to make sure that all costs are identified in order that we can uh, have half a chance of recovering all of the costs of service delivery. The second aspect of the uh, markup or this, um, the um, UOM cost and markup uh, calculation process is to be able to identify a profit markup. Now typically profit has been treated almost as a dirty word in the broader not-for-profit and charitable sector in Australia. For a number of reasons we've used the term surplus um, and often organisations have striven uh, very hard to make sure that any surplus they do report is a virtually an immaterial surplus in the context of their turnover as an organisation. However, we need to be making a profit in order to ensure financial sustainability within a market style funding arrangement. And therefore one of the things that I think is really important and has been incorporated in the broader costing and pricing learning program materials is a discussion on profit and the importance of profit which allows not-for-profit organisations to set aside capital which will be used to replace assets and used to fund innovation and change in their organisation over future periods. In other words, if you're not obtaining a, a profit from your operations uh, at the organisational level then you will be uh, in a very difficult sustainability pos uh, position uh, certainly in the medium term if not in the shorter term. 
The other aspect that is uh, important to consider um, is that the cost recovery plus that profit markup equals target price. And it's that target price, of course, versus the actual price achieved that we should be strategising uh, about. In that regard, in terms of arriving at a markup, we need to consider things like the needs of our financial plan. And one of the things that we'll talk about in a future webinar when we talk about financial sustainability is that not-for-profit organisations and indeed for-profit organisations participating in disability service uh, delivery must consider the needs of their organisation from a financial perspective over the three to five year horizon as opposed to the typical budget year estimates that we have at the moment. So most organisations are very adept at and used to these days of developing a strategic plan that spans a three to five year period. We also need to have a financial plan that is attached to that strategic plan so that we understand what capital and other things are required. If we have a strong uh, understanding of our financial needs over that three to five year period, we are better placed to be able to identify what our markup should be uh, for our target price at this stage of the game. The second uh, element that we need to consider in the context of um, the uh, markup that we might have is of course the realistic capacity associated with um, the organisation or service recipient recipient being able to pay the charge that is required. And so it could be that in fact some UOMs attract different markups depending on the likelihood of achieving those markups and some UOMs uh, might also be differently supplied in different markets so to speak at different prices. So there's a number of strategising issues around that that we'll talk on a little bit shortly but I think need to be considered at this point in time. The second last issue on that slide is also an important issue and that means that we need to consider the volume of our UOMs that we're likely to get out of the door during a, a planning period. In other words, the activity levels are just as important as the target price that we are um, trying to achieve or rather that markup. The higher the activity levels, then on balance and in very general terms, often the lower the markup can be. It's also part of the process though to review the actual markups achieved as a check on each service or product line to ensure that targets have been achieved and that any material underperformance or indeed overperformance is identified and examined. Like the targets themselves, the review should not be straitjacket nor should it be uh, the target markup be the same for all products and services. As I mentioned before, we will discuss this a little bit more shortly, but it is possible to have different target prices for different types of UOM and indeed for different UOMs provided in different markets. Let's have a look at a little bit more on pricing. Okay, so setting the target markup is really quite a significant challenge as I mentioned before for most organisations providing disability services, principally because we've never really had to do this uh, before. But it's also difficult too because of course the markup, the profit that is created by a not-for-profit organisation particularly is not available for distribution and doesn't represent a return on investment in that sense. However, as I said before, the profit is critical so that organisations are able to um, replace assets and to meet their financial needs for innovation and change management over the medium to longer term. As also indicated, it is likely that the product, uh, sorry, the uh, price or at least the markup can vary from product to pro product and service to service um, and it is also important to understand that you may need to have a minimum target price or a minimum uh, markup uh, in order to ensure your financial sustainability. In other words, a line drawn in the sand where regardless of the type of service uh, being delivered that you feel as an organisation you cannot deliver it for less than the particular target price that you're trying to achieve. To some extent, the variability in the target markup may extend from how exactly you have conducted your costing project. In other words, depending on the contents in your costing project, you may have more or less to consider in terms of your markup. This is particularly in the case of working capital costs, any deferred expenses and infrastructure depreciation, where you might not have used, uh, included those items in your costing, and we strongly recommend that you do, then you need to include those items in as part of your markup. Often 
organisations do this in different ways and you need to settle on what's the best way for your organisation. Again, have a look at the macro case study uh, when you're considering this topic in order to make sure that you feel comfortable uh, with the decisions that you might have to make here. You also need to remember that a lot of pricing like a lot of costing, is very subjective. It's using estimates and ideas uh, about what might occur in the future, so using forecasts based on history. Remembering you always need to ensure that there is a strong um, as reasonableness check of all of your calculations and that you spend time looking at your calculations and having others look at them as well, particularly in the first few iterations of your pricing process. The things that we need to cover though are outlined on this slide. The cost of providing the service is obvious. The cost of working capital, so how much money is put aside to ensure this service can operate and is not being used for other things. You might also, and this is a really important point to consider, consider the actual cash outflows for deferred expenses such as long service leave and annual leave. Remember, long service leave and annual leave is accrued or expensed, costed into your project and service delivery uh, at its current rate. However, it might be some time before you pay out on those entitlements and remembering those entitlements are paid out at the rate due at that point in time as opposed to the current rate that they might have been costed at. Finally, reinvestment in infrastructure, innovation and change management all require capital and capital comes out of profit generally for any organisation and therefore achieving that target price or the, the best part of that target price you can is critical to make sure of your um, uh, change management requirements and ensuring that you're able to innovate and change effectively. There's some further things to consider uh, once the required markup or surplus is calculated for each service line. The question then becomes how can you implement or look to implement this particular target? Obviously the target is only that, a target, and you will always have a variation between the, the target that you've calculated and the expectations of your um, price uh, actually achieved uh, from your funder. And this doesn't matter if it's NDIS or any other funder indeed, you will have a, a target gap, price gap between those two. The thing to remember though is that if you're able to reach the target for every product that is sold, at least than, uh, for every product, that's fantastic. If you're able to achieve the target for some products, then have some products that are not uh, achieving their target price or even some products that might not be achieving their total cost of service um, uh, delivery to you, then you need to think about the service mix in order to ensure that the organisation is at the top level overall achieving sufficient income to be able to uh, cover all of its costs. So that management process called managing the target price gap is really critical in that we need to understand not only what our price gap is by individual item but also at a macro level or at an organisation level because we can afford to have some parts of our organisation or some of our services delivering a considerable surplus which we might use to offset losses in other critical parts of our services. Remembering then the required surplus does not need to be uniform across all service lines. It can be flexible and that flexibility is incre incredibly important from a strategic management perspective. Let's just refresh ourselves now with the pricing, uh, identifying the target price gap. Once again, I won't sit on this uh, very long, but I do think it's important for us to remember that the key focus of all of this work is to identify that target price gap at the individual unit of measurement level and also at the macro or total organisational level. And so to that extent, we need to also think about um, some of the um, elements we need to be able to deal with individual um, target price gaps that might be negative for particular UOMs or where our short term sustainability might be okay but the medium to longer term sustainability is questionable because we're not actually achieving the surplus outcomes that we need to be able to fund our financial requirements. In doing that we need to become realistic about that target price gap. 
while the target price is of course the best possible scenario for our organisation, we know that those people purchasing uh, services from us, so the NDIS and other funders particularly, are not going to provide that target price. It's very likely that there'll be a gap between the two and therefore we need to understand what is the maximum gap that we can afford to ensure immediate financial sustainability and what the maximum gap is that we can afford in terms of ongoing sustainability. So calculating the prices is one thing but the service mix and pricing is a critical thing to, uh, to consider. Why is it crucial? Because that ensures the survival of our organisation but more importantly allows us to have capital to ensure that we can grow and change. Therefore we need to think about the service mix. The, this chart shows the target price gap for each unit of measurement provided by NCG. That's the organisation that is featured in the macro case study. As can be seen, each UOM results in a negative target price gap. This is not unusual under the NDIS regime as it is at the moment. So more broadly, in the costing and pricing learning program, we discuss service mix more deeply and we use a number of elements to give us a, uh, a better demonstration of service mix within that macro case study. However, what is important to understand is once the UOM gap is analysed, it might be found that some products are of more concern than others. Additionally, while the ideal is to achieve a positive target price gap for every UOM, not-for-profit providers usually seek to achieve a cumulative positive or neutral price gap. That is, we adjust the service mix so that the cumulative effect of neutral and positive target price gaps outweighs the negative impact of target price gaps that are insufficient to cover the costs of certain UOMs. So it's really important to consider this. Um, if you think about, say, an example of Kmart, as we all know, you go into Kmart, there are products and um, uh, on offer on every shelf in every part of the store. Some products deliver far greater profit and some deliver less profit. Some, profit, uh, some products are offered at below cost because it's believed that that will entice customers in who will not only buy that product but also buy some other products. So having a very, very strong and substantial understanding of your UOM price gap is critical to be able to understand what kind of sales mix you need or service mix you need. Further to that though, you also need to be able to understand that while some services will never achieve a sufficient uh, price to allow those services to be sustainable in their own right. Uh, of course a lot of organisations will want to continue to provide a particular service because it rounds out the service provision for from a client's perspective or it is political, politically or in some other reason, for some other reason, uh, important to deliver. The issue is not necessarily that you're delivering a service that um, is, not, is delivering a, a negative target price gap, but the quantum of services that you deliver in that category as compared to the quantum of services you deliver that deliver a positive price gap. And therefore, it's really important that you do understand absolutely each level of each service delivery item or each UOM, what the target price gap is and also how you know um, what service mix that you should provide in order to have financial sustainability at the corporate level. Okay, let's just have a look at some governance issues um, to round out our brief discussion on pricing. Management control of the process and the governance behind it is probably the hardest part of all for many organisations. If for no other reason than typically, as I mentioned before, these organisations don't have a lot of experience of pricing particularly. Firstly though, the pricing checks that are made need to be done correctly and management needs to be satisfied that the prices are achievable or if they're not achievable, then there needs to be discussion about the extent to which those prices need to be reduced, in other words we need to become more efficient or reduce costs or the extent to which there are some other ways that we need to move forward to try and balance the books by reducing that target price gap. This is done individually in terms of examining, examining the target price gap but we're concerned about the effect at the corporate level at the to in terms of cumulative target price gap rather than the individual. 
Once the target price gap is identified, decisions need to be made by the board of management or the CEO, depending on the policy frameworks, uh, as to whether to accept any shortfalls in pr pricing and to try to make them up elsewhere, as to whether costs can be cut in certain areas um, to make good the shortfall. In other words, you can reduce your costs to increase the surplus or the profit of the organisation. You might also, of course, seek additional funding. Now, that's less likely under an NDIA type scheme because it's very difficult for individual organisations to influence. However, one of the things that would be really important for organisations is that they continually um, report back to and communicate with National Disability Services, for instance, their experience in relation to costing and pricing so that organisations like NDS can advocate to ensure that appropriate funding is provided for services. Of course, there can be other sources of funding as well, particularly in terms of capital, because increasingly that working capital and that asset replacements requirements are very difficult to be funded through uh, the operations of an organisation. And of course the final and perhaps in many respects the less attractive option is to not deliver particular services that result in losses to the organisation. Now again, going back to my previous comments, it's important to remember that an individual service that results in a negative target price gap is not necessarily a service that needs to be uh, gotten rid of. However, what you might find is that you need to reduce the number of those services or you might find additionally that you need to make profit before you provide those services in order to ensure that you are financially sustainable. The key overall is probably for most organisations though that they become efficient by sticking to their knitting, doing the things that they're very good at and stepping away from some of the things that may be less, um, that they're less experienced at or less able to provide from an efficient perspective. This is where mergers, collaborations and other work uh, opportunities for collaborations become very important for you to be able to identify other service providers that can make you um, uh, sure that your clients are going to get the best possible service. That concludes our webinar for today looking at um, uh, pricing. The next webinar we're going to have a look at um, controls in costing and pricing. So we're going to look at some of the risks, some of the nuances, the difficulties uh, that you need to take into consideration in control, um, controlling costing and pricing processes and also from a governance perspective. In the meantime, if you have any queries of com or comments, uh, we'd be very pleased to receive them and the Curtin Not-for-Profit Initiative contacts are provided in, on this slide for you to be able to uh, ask any questions. I hope you enjoyed the, seminar, the webinar and I look forward to catching up with you at the next webinar. All the best. <laughs>